Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the video. I hope your day is going great. Mine's been awesome so far and today we have to talk about the meta changes because whoa! These PTR nerfs for D.Va and Brigida are crazy. It finally seems like Blizzard has done something to get rid of goats. It seems like ever since the Overwatch League ended, all we have seen and heard about is goats. So I'm excited today to bring you guys this video about why I believe goats is probably not going to be played anymore and what the new meta will likely shape up to. In this video, we're going to go through the changes first of Brigida, then the second one will be of D.Va, and then lastly, we'll be taking a look at the buff of Reaper. So I'm pretty much going to give my full analysis on how I think these new changes will affect the meta specifically for the Overwatch League. I'm not going to be talking too much about ranked because you guys all know my forte and what I like to focus on in this channel is the Overwatch League. Now real quick guys, if you enjoy my content, be sure go down below and smash that like button for me. Every single like really helps out the video. Also subscribe if you want to do that as well. And now let's jump into it starting off with the Brigida nerf. Now these Overwatch patch notes were posted on January 7th and this is for the PTR. So it's been a few days, I'm a little late on it, but I really wanted to cover it and I know a lot of you guys have been asking for it. So we're gonna start off with the armor nerf actually, not Brigida exactly. This does affect her and her ultimate a lot, but let's jump into this one. Hero updates, general damage reduction from armor reduced from minus five to minus three. So developer comments down below is this. Before the change, armor reduced all incoming damage up to five, maxing at half of the normal amount. This change reduces the damage reduction to three while still capping it at half. This change will mostly be noticeable on heroes that fire quickly or in a burst of shots, such as shotguns, and which do more than six damage per shot. For example, Soldier 76's heavy pulse rifle will now do 16 damage per shot to armor, up from 14, an increase of 15%. Armor was a bit too strong overall, especially when being healed quickly and often. This change will help more heroes fight against higher armored enemies. Now this is big, and it's the first time in all of Overwatch we've ever seen an armor nerf. I know early on when Quad Tank was super strong, they did nerf D.Va's overall armor amount, but they've never overall nerfed the damage reduction that armor gives every hero. So this is like a huge widespread thing for a lot of heroes with armor. And armor is a huge reason why GOATS right now is so viable, specifically because Brigida, obviously she gives her teammates armor from her ultimate and we'll be taking a look at a nerf that involves her ult later. So this is really going to nerf GOATS and just in general nerf tanks because most tanks in the game are filled with armor. And now let's just go ahead and take a look at all of the tanks real quick. Starting off at the top, we have D.Va here, 600 total health, right? 200 of that's armor. Moving on to Orisa. 400 health total, 200 of its armor. That's huge. Arisa's going to get melted now. Same with Reinhardt. Total 500 health, but also 200 armor. Next, we have Winston. Total 400 health, 100 armor. Not as much as the others, but still impactful. Then we have Wrecking Ball sitting at 600 health and 100 armor there. Luckily for him, his ability that gives him shield is actual shield, not armor, because that would have been very bad for him. Then we have Brigida. Total 250 health. 50 of that is going to be armor, so this is a huge nerf to mostly every GOATS hero and extra tanks. And as mentioned in the post, heroes that fire quickly in bursts of shots, such as shotguns, will now do a lot more damage. So we're looking at heroes like Reaper, who used to counter tanks, but during GOATS meta, Reaper really couldn't counter the tanks because they had too much armor and they had too much healing. So this alone kind of makes Reaper a better pick if you want to counter tanks if a team is running GOATS. And just overall, in general, a lot of heroes will be doing more damage to these tanks up front and will be able to melt them quicker. McCree, Soldier, Tracer, because you're just doing more damage overall to them. And they're not going to heal as fast anymore because, again, they're taking more damage. Their armor is going to be gone quicker, and once their armor is gone, you'll really be able to mount through them. And I don't know if you guys actually realize how much of an impact there is in a difference between actual health pools and armor. Previous to this nerf, a lot of damage was cut almost by half, around 40% to 50% because of armor. That's why when you were trying to run Tracer into these tanks in the last meta, you weren't doing any damage to them. You were thinking in your head, like, why is this guy 
guy not dying. He's not taking any damage. It's because the damage you were doing to them was so damn minimal, it didn't matter at the end of the day because they were getting passive heals from Lucio and probably heals from Moira and Zenyatta and Brigida. So it's just like your damage was completely negated unless you broke all the armor, then you could get some damage done. Now it's going to be easier to break that armor. Heroes are now going to be doing 15 to 20 percent more damage to tanks and there won't be as much of it either because of this next nerf we're going to talk about with Brigida. And now let's transition this into the Brigida nerf which is huge. So we're looking at Brigida's ultimate rally. It now has a maximum duration of 30 seconds. You can no longer pop your ultimate whenever you want on Brigida and just sit there with full armor for the entire game until somebody shoots you and takes it down. Now it will start to dissipate after 30 seconds. It will disintegrate. It's gone. So this means Brigida now has to save her ultimate for the perfect timing right before a team fight and also means now that teams that get engaged on by a Brigida who's ulting can just disengage and not worry about it. They can wait 20-25 seconds and then start to engage again and know that the Brigida ult and armor is going to be gone. Which is huge for the Overwatch League because teams know how to disengage. They know when to take fights and they know when to not take fights. So now this Brigida ult is going to get completely neglected and denied. You should not be able to counter a rally at all. There's nothing you can do. You can't disengage because they're just going to have it forever. You have to fight and try to get that armor off, which means you'll probably lose that fight. And that was the biggest issue for teams in the Overwatch League. You had to fight a team when their Brigida ult was up no matter what, which almost guaranteed that you were going to lose unless you had your own. And guess what? When you go in there to lose the fight, you're probably not going to get all the armor off of them. And you're also going to feed them a ton of ults for their next fight. Now you can react to it as if it's a Zenyatta ult or if it's a Lucio ult. Do whatever you need to do to not fight. Yeah, 30 seconds is still a long time. Lucio ult or Zenyatta ult don't last that long but you can still disengage it, which is much better than going in there, fighting, trying to get the armor off of them, and giving them ultimates as you lose the team fight. So this is kind of like just another armor nerf in general. It's specifically for Brigida and her ultimate, but her ultimate helps out the entire team. So now the entire team is going to lack armor, unlike previous metas, which is what made GOAT so strong. These tanks were unkillable. You couldn't break through their armor. But now you disengage, you just wait, and now you send possibly your Reaper in, or your Tracer to go in, and melt heroes without armor. Zenyatta's gonna get hit hard. Because players like Sabiolbi, Prophet, Carpe, they'll be able to go on that tracer and go one clip a Zenyatta because she's not going to have a ton of armor before a fight starts anymore. Which is why Tracer was so good during the first couple of stages because she can get in and get out and eliminate a target without really facing any repercussions. But then when Brigida came into the game, she would be facing stuns, armor. I know she'll still possibly face stuns, but Brigida won't be picked as much. So when Brigida's not picked, Tracer will be able to come out and come alive. And she got a damage buff, basically, against these tanks. She'll be able to mount Winston, Reinhardt, Arisa, Diva, whoever you're playing a lot quicker. And as I just mentioned now, more specifically Diva, because guess what? She just got a nerf too. And this one for me is huge, because Diva, for the first time ever since that armor nerf that I talked about during quad tank meta like two years ago, got a massive nerf. Defense Matrix, cooldown increased from one seconds to two seconds. Developer comments, this change allows D.Va's enemies to try to play around her defense matrix by increasing its downtime between uses. Now some of you guys might not think this is that big of a nerf, but don't look at it from your perspective or your ranked game perspective, look at it from the Overwatch League perspective. We're talking about the best of the best players in the world. There is now an extra second window between when D.Va can stop matrixing and turn it back on. This is going to make it so much easier for professional players to play around D.Va's matrix. Matrix. One example, let's just look at Tracer. If you watch a VOD of a Tracer fighting a D.Va in the Overwatch League, this is what would happen. Tracer blinks into D.Va, shoots, D.Va immediately turns her Matrix on. Then Tracer would either unload her full clip into the Matrix or stop and try to get D.Va to stop her Matrix. Then the D.Va would respond, stop her Matrix. Then the Tracer would start shooting again. Well, guess what? In basically half a second, the D.Va Matrix is going to be back up and that's going to block at least 70, 60% of the damage that Tracer is now shooting again. Because we have to take the player's reaction times into account. As soon as D.Va stops her Matrix, it's not like Tracer is going to immediately start shooting that split second. 
there's going to be a delay, 0.3 seconds, 0.4 seconds before she starts shooting again, which gives the D.Va about 0 0.6, 0 0.5 seconds left of being shot out without her matrix. Not a lot. So as a Tracer player, you would really have to try to play around that matrix, and it was extremely tough, and you would end up getting around 70% of your damage block. But now that window has another extra second added into it. That's a full clip. D.Va will now no longer be able to block 70% of the damage. It'll be more like 20, 25%. And typically when Tracer would start to reload is when D.Va players would drop their matrix. But now guess what? If D.Va drops her matrix, she has to wait two more seconds. Tracer's going to be done reloading and shooting again. It's going to be so much easier for Tracer players to bait out that matrix. And that's just for Tracer. We're not talking about other heroes like Soldier, McCree, Reaper, whoever it is. She's going to have to balance her matrix a lot more than before. And this is going to hurt D.Va. I still see her being played a lot, but this will hurt her. This is a straight up hard nerf. Like I've barely touched the tip of the iceberg by just giving an example of Tracer and D.Va. D.Va's job in the Overwatch League is so hard. You have to do so many things at once, specifically pill for your team. You have to keep your main tank alive. You have to keep your supports alive. And it was a little bit easier in the GOATS meta because he had so much pill already with Brigida's armor and all the healing and all the tanks kind of sitting around them. Now moving into this new meta where armor's nerf, your Zenyatta is going to be a lot more exposed, which leads to a Tracer or a Flanker, a Genji, whoever it is, being able to go in and one clip her or kill her really quickly. And this means that Zenyatta in this type of meta is going to be expecting her D.Va to come in and save her with boops and Matrix and stuff like that. Well, if you don't have your Matrix up, they're screwed. And D.Va's jobs just got like three times harder because of this nerf. And now moving on to the last change of this patch notes, which is going to be the Reaper buff, which honestly is what really hits home for me and makes me think that Reaper is going to destroy goats and just end it. The change they're making to Reaper is this. The Reaping, which is his passive, it's life still. It was increased from 30% of the damage you deal to now 50%. A 20% jump. So this means when you walk into a D.Va and shoot her for 100 damage, guess what? You just healed 50 health for just shooting a D.Va, whose matrix is probably going to be down, whose armor is now a lot easier to shred. Holy crap! I don't know if that just sounds incredibly OP in my own head, but what the heck? That sounds like incredible sustain. How are you going to kill Reaper besides flashbanging him with McCree? Brigida probably won't be played as much, and when she's not played, you can't stun the Reaper. Reaper is going to hard W into your tanks and just melt them. What are you going to do? You're going to shoot him, but he's just going to heal it. And now if you want to add on top of that, imagine an Ana or a Zenyatta who has an orb on him just healing him the entire time while he holds W in into you. Maybe you have a Zarya on your team, because by the way, Zarya is still going to be good. She faces no nerfs in this meta. She's one of the only tanks and goats who doesn't have armor and gets hit by that nerf. And she also gets buffed from her Graviton Surge because of D.Va's Matrix, so Zarya is going to be huge in this meta. This could be a hard Zarya Reaper and a meta where you just pocket the living crap out of your Reaper, give him bubbles while he W's in, hard pockets him, Nana boosts him, throws nades on him. Reaper is going to destroy everything. The only thing I can see counter Reaper is stuns, a McCree or a Brigida, but if you're sending your own Reaper in with a bubble, with protection, I, I don't know. I don't see him being stopped, especially with an Ana, especially with Nana Boost and Pocket Healing. I really do feel like Beyblade meta is back, boys. And we all know there are some talented players in the Overwatch League, and they will be able to utilize Reaper to its maximum potential, and I just see it going to the sky. The sky is the limit with the potential with Reaper. It's exciting, too, because I also see a meta where you can run a lot of different stuff. Stuff. I don't think it's going to be hard 100%, you know, Beyblade 24-7. There's going to be a lot of Reaper in my opinion, but I feel like you'll be able to switch it up, like dive Reaper, dive without Reaper. I, I'm i excited, boys. This, These are crazy changes. I've tried to break it down as deep as I can for the Overwatch League. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, slap a like on it. Every single like really helps out my channel. Also, if you want to watch my videos daily, don't forget to subscribe. There will be another one probably coming out tonight. That's right, boys. The double upload will return possibly I might run into stuff where I can't do it but I'm gonna try my best thank you so much for watching the video guys have a great night peace